Go ahead and get started with the second episode of the documentary. Are you guys ready? Because we are about to get started. Here it is. John, 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 what's a John? It was like 2 a.m. and he was tired. John's like, John's. He'll get me on my on a days where I'm just not playing too well. John's, just John's. A lot of people don't know where the term came from. It just started, but I believe it was a guy in Texas. His name was John. And no matter what, every time he'd lose, he'd have an excuse. He'd have a reason for losing. My controller wasn't working. You should ask who that, by the way. There's a little bit of lag on the TV. I didn't sleep last night. I don't know why I'm not talking to him. I need a warm up. Yeah. <laughs> we have a like a Swedish term, Inga Jonas. It's pretty much no Jans. He used to like using much Jans back in the time. My favorite one, I think, was uh, I was fighting somebody and they were like, someone's touching my shoulder, and I was like, no Jans. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool, RJ. Very cool to see you here. Turn out the vid some, sure. Bit more, okay. I was like really into the word true that for some reason. That, that's like when the word just first came out, like everybody was saying it. And so I was like walking down the street, and, like <laughs> walking home from the school, and I'm just like, true that. What's yeah, our game keeper? That, that. Just <laughs> I, I said it so much. Chief Rico, what's up, man? Smash tag chaotic. <laughs> Solid. Solid Jake is my tag in the Smash community. JV3X3. Just random numbers and initials. Some people create the tag when they're younger. Sean Dude 89. Morg. Unknown force. <laughs> W-I-F-E wife. As you get older you realize you don't want that like name to like, stick to you. <laughs> yeah, I recorded this back when Today's I was I think Dr. I was twenty five years old. Come on. <laughs> I'm twenty eight now. If I could go back and change it, I probably would. I would be something cool like Dark Rain. But as it is, I'm, I'm Thank you, Nathan. And, uh, <laughs> and I identify with it. I wouldn't say that I, I found myself in Smash, but I found a second self in Smash. No, no, you're good at Mega Breaks. Just let me know if you guys need, need me to increase it more. Instead of friends, as alternate set of goals, allowed me to have an identity that was very different. Uh, in, in regular life, some people will call me the, the most positive person they've met. I'm a very positive person, but in Smash, I'm, I'm arrogant. I'm arrogant and I can be condescending. I know what I want and I'm aggressive and forceful. And that's true. What it's Wipe is saying right now. Identity. Everyone had like a, a second identity in the Smash community back in the days, for sure. I'm pretty sure everyone has a second identity now, but but yeah, back in the days, MDVA used to be all cocky, arrogant. I don't know about and real world we were just that's who we were. But I can say that his personality in the Smash world is very cool. I did get to know that as an. He's one of those players who's just completely 100% like all like thinking. He's actually the only person to ever beat me in tournament in a side. That's exactly correct, Carson. JV did create JV 3x3. It was early. I'd probably be able to beat him a little later in my career. They were calling the master of all the characters and he was good with all of them, all 26. Okay, let me go ahead and turn up the volume. With their own character. And it was kind of embarrassing because you'd have these people that specialize in characters and could beat them. And his style was Hopefully that's very better, guys. unique, very like... It's almost dumb how he played the game. It's one thing to I would not rename myself King Trick. In one way, she dies just to way too good of a name. He would do a march forward smash like three times in a row. It's like he missed the first time, he missed the second time. There's no way he's gonna do it the third time. He'd do it the third time. And you're like, that's so stupid. Why did I just get hit by that? You might not even be able to control a character to, to like make it look like a top tier character, but like okay. lose beat you anyway. It was very ugly, <laughs> but. He won, and he won a lot. Oh, that's right. So the second episode is the Azen episode. 
Okay. Asen and H2 Dude, I'm calling with some Asen most stories. Most of their contests with the other East Coast elites, Deadly Alliance and Team Ben. Meanwhile, the newly minted champion of the West Coast had just met a player who would forever change the face of Smash, and he didn't even play the game. I actually met Isaiah at TG4. He was a Smash 64 player. He didn't even play Melee at all. He actually money matched me at Smash 64. And I thought I was really good at there. I was like, you know what? I don't know I should money match you. You're probably going to lose. And he was like, no, no, let's just money match. I saw Isaiah, he was playing 64, and he was, he was amazing. I was like, oh shit. So I was like, you know what, Isaiah? Let's just cancel the money match. He's like, what? How come? I was like, I'm not feeling it. So I told him, like, no money match. I was talking to Isaiah about uh, melee and stuff online, but I think he had potential to be good because he's really got 64. I was got 64 and it carried over. You should come down two weeks before TG5 and I'll house you. We can practice, become partners, and I think we can be really good. Eventually, we became a really good training partners, kind of like sparring. We would uh, go off each other. That's, I think it's pretty and cool and what they did. They just became training company. partners and got really, really so good like, together. Okay, as long as we're over here, let's go to a tournament over here. This was 03, summer of 03. TG5, when it first happened, um, everyone was pretty hyped since the best East Coast players at the time, best men with players at the time, all going to one place and Maddie was hosting it. Who's better, Ken or Azen? Ken or Azen? And this tournament is going to resolve that all. Azen advanced through the bracket and seemed to be doing well until he faced Reciferous and lost a Sheik Ditto. Knocked into loser's bracket, Azen again fought a Sheik Ditto, this time against Isaiah. With a one-two punch, Azen was knocked out of the top three and out of the money. It seemed, even without their top player, the West Coast was indeed the best coast. But something about the tournament didn't sit well with the boys from the East, and they made it known that in their eyes, the Personally, I think that Azen was maybe farce. like sandbagging by going Sheik Dittos because, like, in Sheik Dittos, you can chain grab over and over again. I think Azen probably could have went like a better character like Fox or Falco. When I first fought him, he played, uh, I think it was Falco or Fox against me. And they used them like regularly, and they had like a pretty crazy items list too. Ridiculous things would constantly happen. You know, you grab Pokeball, like, you don't know what's in there. Hearing the stories about the tournament items definitely had an, an effect on the outcome. So we wanted a tournament like on our turf with our rules where we still had Ken and Isaiah represented and proved to them that basically on our home turf with our rules you can't beat us. They wanted, you know, West Coast players to come over there. Obviously like the only two West Coast players they wanted to come over there was me and Isaiah. We wanted revenge. Okay. Here's just a little thing about game over I wanted to share with you guys really quick. So the way, the only way for Chillinity to get Isaiah and Ken's attention to come to game over to the East Coast was if they were to have a special pot bonus for Ken and Isaiah to come. So Chillinity would have all these tournaments on the East Coast and the NDVA area, and he would take a lot of the money from those tournaments, and then he would eventually got enough to get like it was like three hundred dollars, and, and that would be the team's pot bonus to get as an I mean, I'm sorry, um, Isaiah and Ken to come over to the East Coast. And um, so that's kind of like, and then uh, then at some point on Smashboards, Dylan was like, okay, Ken, we have we have your money now. First, Ken, he initiated, he, he's like, I'm not coming to the East Coast. Screw you guys. We're better than you. So th this is like the golden age of Smash. It was, it was amazing. And then Chillin' Dude was like, okay, fine. If we, if we gather up this much money, will you come? And he's like, I don't know, man. And then uh, Chillin' Dude gathered up the money anyways. It was like $300. And then uh, Chillin' Dude's like, okay, here you go, Ken. We raised up $300. Uh, $300. You better come. You better bring Isaiah. And then um, and then Ken's like, okay, you better make it the team's prize winnings uh, for that $300. We better win that for teams. And then he's like, and Chillin' Dude's like, okay, fine. Whatever, Ken. And then Ken finally came to the East Coast, and here, here he is. He's at game over. So that's what kind of like sparked Ken's interest into coming to the East Coast. Sucks. Yeah, Chief Rico, people used to say Chillin' Dude ate too much. I don't know. That was a great joke. Legion, nobody here. So this guy, 
the place. There's huh. nothing around there. It's just like no. So here we are off to the turn. The guy that is filming this, these videos, it's uh, his name is uh, Mike Monkey. He was really, really good friends with Ken. I guess they became friends when Ken um, came to the East Coast and Mike Monkey let him stay over he over here. So the the reason I bring this up is because um, they used to have something called like I think I think this was part of the documentary, but they had these amazing videos. Like nobody posted videos back then, and it was only like, one group of people that used to play like uh, have smash fest and record all of those games and record all those videos and um and that was a uh, i forgot what the group name was called but they were freaking awesome and we uh we watched all of their videos like everybody in the united states like we just watched all of their videos back in the day in 2004 and so um let me i think it i think it comes up late, later in the documentary so let me go ahead and show you i'll i'll mention it again later this is my buddy ken it sucks Chops. Chops is an MDVA player. I don't know who this is. Right? It's a Mexican guy. Uh, Old school guy. American Legion. Played Sheik. It was just like the place. There was nothing around. There was just like no food places around. It's just where the turn it was. There's my partner practicing. Who are these people? Okay. There's my partner practice. So on this TV right here, that's when I uh, first I I was dropped off at this tournament with my dad. My dad dropped me off, and uh, Isaiah was already playing on this television right here, and uh, he was just playing against everybody. Everybody was so psyched to see Isaiah play because you know it's the West Coast finally coming to the East Coast to play for once, and uh, so there was a huge crowd. And uh, H2IL, like chilling dude and as and they were just like, hey, Chu, play the Isaiah, play Isaiah, because they, they knew I was good at the time. And I was like, okay, sure. And then so I sat down to play against Isaiah. Isaiah picked Falcon against him. He just straight up picked Falcon. He, he was like, he, he was on try hard mode the whole entire time. And I was just like, okay, I'm just going to Captain Falcon do it to you. Because I was like really cocky back then because I was really good. And so I played him into Captain Falcon Ditto. He two stalked me. <laughs> Freaking Isaiah. It's too good. Who are these people? Oh, it's Joshu. How was the drive? It sucked. I was just so excited. Like, look at all these people from all over the country come to play melee. EA showed up in full force. We even had a couple Canada people. Oh, I think that was the first time I also met husband and wife too. Right here. The newlyweds. I saw your picture. This is my. That's wicked. That's awesome. There, there's the counterpart to my wife, yeah, husband, of course, um, which has been very difficult over the years. Like, okay, so with these two guys right here, so just a little story. Like, so back in like 2006, this is way after Game Over, but back in 2006, me and Chillin' Dude were teaming with each other, and that's when we first started teaming with each other, and we played against these guys, and um, we had like one of our friends um, distract them, and uh, while they were distracted. Me and Chill Dude actually switched tags. He picked Ice Commerce and I picked uh, I picked Fox, and uh, we ended up fighting against them, and uh, we ended up winning the whole entire tournament set against uh, wife and husband, and uh, they didn't find out until maybe four or five years down the road that we did that on them. There, I guess wife is pretty bitter. <laughs> Can't tell you how many times I've had to. Explain to someone that I'm not gay, I'm not in a gay relationship, it's just a thing. The Newlyweds was a TV show with Nick and Jessica, and that was part of it, but also Peach wears a white wedding dress, and she looks like a bride, and so it was silly. Are you chilling? That's how I know. Yeah. Who's doing? John? Awesome. Who's running this whole deal? He's got the money in his hand. When Game Over happened, I was 14, so... I mean, I was still very young during this entire thing. Where'd you guys come from? New York City. New York City? Good to meet you. Trying to meet everyone. Sorry to show the camera in your face. I'm gonna own everyone here today. You gonna kick some fucking ass? Who's this? Samantha. Samantha? Yeah. Are you playing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you playing? I'm trying to meet everyone. Here. Hold on, guys. Sorry to show the camera in your face. I'm gonna own everyone here today. Okay, so I'm not sure if it's this guy, but there was this guy, I forgot what his name was, but he was a member of DA. He played Pikachu. He had the most rage that you've ever seen. And this is like back in the 2004, 2006 area. 
And so he would go to tournaments, like MDBA tournaments, and then after losing a tournament set, he would pick up a chair, and he would just slam it onto the floor. He did it so many times, and I think he ended up punching Mewtwo King once. I think I mentioned that in the last episode, but yeah. Um, I think his name is D.A. Billy or something like that. That guy was crazy, dude. Are you going to kick some fucking ass? Who's this? Samantha. Samantha? Yeah. Are you playing? Yeah. Oh, who are you? Uh, oh my god, it's Mike. Yeah. I'm Mike from Canada. That's Mike Monkey. In the days Ken, one of Ken's Mewtwo, best friends. Mike and the Punch Crew. Were the Punch Crew. Mewtwo. Okay, so it's these guys right here. So... This is, well, yeah, let me go ahead and show you. So, th the Punch Crew. So, yeah, like I was saying, like, these guys were amazing back then. Like, we didn't have any content back then. We, we didn't have YouTube. We had no video content in Melee. And so, the only way that we could compare our skills were to watch the Punch Crew and to see how they were playing. And I, I would always, you know, judge myself and compare, like, my skill level with these guys because they were the only people I was able to see. Aside from my friends that I played, the only other people that I've seen play Melee were these guys. And so these guys were freaking awesome. They were, they were a huge hit when it came to Melee videos back in the day and Melee content. Gated commentary on the game itself. Mostly sophisticated. They haven't heard of you guys. What? Punch group? What happened? Ouch! The internet, as well as the community, was still very young. All around the room. Okay. I gotta, I gotta make a quick comment. They haven't heard of you guys. Okay. So, this guy... Gosh, I hate this guy so much. Okay, his name is Snex. He's a Midwest player. And he's just, like, one of the most rudest people that you'll ever meet. He's just a really, really, like, mean person. And he just says, like, the meanest things to you. And so if you ever see this guy in person, definitely stay away from him. And uh, I try to avoid him because, like, this guy, he's not hes not a cool guy. I don't like him. What? what happened? Ouch! The internet, as well as the community, was still very... This guy, his name is uh, Video Gamer. He was the best player in the Midwest back in the day. He he became pretty good friends with Ken and I. Young. All around the room, quiet. They talk all the shit on the internet, man. That's me. I'm in the red uh, hoodie. It's just like, um, staying next to Asa. You have like two personalities. You have like their online personality, and then when you meet them in person. There's a lot of talk online, you know that. Play them in person. That's how it is. They want to draw you here. That's all. The first teams from it uh, came on. The East Coast at the time weren't too big on teams. They didn't really care. It's all about singles. So Isaiah and I just like stomped through that whole entire bracket. I just want to tell you guys about my performance in this tournament. For the doubles match, for my doubles matches, I ended up playing Chillin' Dude and uh, his partner who was Midwest Eddie. And he was a really, really good player back in the day. And I teamed with one of the, our random H2IO members called Jaytanic. Me and Chillin' Dude uh, went against each other in doubles. And I ended up um, I, I ended up having to fight Chillin' Dude and Eddie in a 2v1, I believe it was. And uh, my, so my partner's dead. And then I, so then I, I killed um, I killed Chillin' Dude. And so it's just me and Eddie in a 1v1. I'm Ice Climber. No, I'm Samus. I used to play Samus back in the day with Jay Tanner because he also played Samus. We called ourselves the Samus Connection. That was our team name back in the day because we kept playing Double Samus. And, and the reason I played Samus so much is because I used to always try to play Samus against my um, my H2IO member, Jay Tannic. Because all he would do is play Samus. He loves Samus. And that guy is super funny. Me and Chillin' are going to have to stream with him sometime and to introduce him to you guys because that guy is awesome. So... I used to, uh, since I was like really, really cocky back in the day, I used to play Samus a lot against him. I just did so many Samus dittos. And he became kind of like my rival when it came to, you know, Samus uh, matchup. And so um, I ended up just asking him to team. I was like, hey, you want to team with Double Samus? And then ever since then, I went to all these tournaments uh, with him just doing Double Samus. And this is one of those. We ended up defeating Chillin' Dude and Midwest Eddie, the Gendorf Flare at this tournament and um, I killed uh, 
I beat. I think I beat Chillin' Dude and Eddie in a two v one with Samus. It was. It was so close. Last match, last hit, everything. Pretty sure no one took a game off that. Yes, Chief Rico, I did use both my hands during this time. I didn't start using one hand until about 2005. Winners finals happened, and that was just brutal. Like Hazen and Andon got decimated. Uh, Chillin do played with Midwest Eddie. He's a Gandalf well, player. Teams did have the one of the best people bonus, in the Midwest at the time. And Isaiah came, I think, knowing that they had teams pretty much in the bag. After it ends, like, okay, so yeah, you got what you wanted. Now it's time for, you know, singles and whatnot. It took the longest time to actually get singles started because I had to write the whole bracket out by hand. Stage 2 I was all doing well. That encouraged me just knowing that, you know, my crew is legit. I was just focused on running the tournament for Cat's a while. Cat what's up, man? I saw that I had to fight Ken. The match was, was crazy because I can remember, like, at first, we were playing all This match is so crazy. Ken vs. I got the opportunity to watch the whole entire thing while it happened. Friendlies a lot that week in preparation, and I would get up throw uppers a lot, but I never got them as much as during that first match against Ken. Okay, this strategy is really, really good, and I should probably. I literally used one hand, Blue Man, when playing Smash. You throw somebody upwards and then hit them with an up air. I'll show it to you guys some other time. Was getting really high for me. And that just started to draw a crowd. I can think of very few times in my melee career where I've been like, oh yeah, I really like the fact that the crowd was in my ear, you know? I did a really good combo on him. I drew him up and I smashed him across the screen. Yes, I think Chillin is taller. All I had to do was smash him out. I'll show it to you later, Blue Man. He came back. At that point, I'm freaking out. And I hit him with a uh, neutral air, send him off. This is sick. Coming back, and this is a situation I've seen so many times with Azen, so I knew what was going to happen. And I just wave dash back, let him put out a forward air, and up smash them. Up smash. <laughs> my reaction to this moment was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe Chillin' Dude beat Ken. I was just shocked. Like ever, probably. That might have been like the highlight of my life to that point. I was never used to losing, and that, that, that was a major shock that um, I can't believe I actually lost too when I, I lost to Chillin' Dude. And when someone told me, like, not too long after that, like, yo, that was Ken's first loss in the bracket, I'm like, oh, my God. Okay. So, after this tournament match, Chillin' Dude never let down on Ken. He never let it down that he beat Ken in tournament. He would always bring it up on Smash Sports. Every time Ken's having a random conversation with somebody, Chillin' Dude would just come up to Ken out of nowhere on Smash Wars and he'd be like, oh, like the time I beat you. Remember that, Ken? Haha, ha, that was so funny. And he would always just pound Ken with that. And, he, and like, that caused Ken to really, really dislike chilling, dude. And, you know, over time, they just became like really, really big enemies and big rivals, which caused a lot of the whole West Coast and East Coast rivalry, I think. And uh, over time, everything got kind of like mellowed out because Ken quit, and then Chillin' Dude, he uh, like melee wasn't that big, and now they're they're in esports now, and they're on the same team, so yeah, they're cool with each other now. But yeah, back then, oh my gosh, they they hated each other. Oh my gosh, I, I could see it in both their both their faces because I spent time with Ken, and I spent time with Chillin' Dude, and <laughs> the things that that Ken said about Chillin'. Oh my gosh, so funny, man! And the things that uh, Chillin' Dude, he, Chillin' Dude didn't really say anything about about Ken, besides for like inappropriate, like childish stuff, like "Oh, Ken is ugly" or something like that. But that was like back then, and like he used to make fun of his teeth or something like that. But uh, other than that, that's all like Chillin' Dude would say. And then, yeah, they just went at it, it like like forever. But um, the way, yeah, they finally matured up, and now they're in esports and they're on the same team. That they're really, really finally cool with each other. They became like. Cool with each other. I think they started that in like 2009. But yeah, crazy. It was so close. Like I could have 
I could have done so many things differently, got a little more sleep or something like before. And Ken hates this, this that he hate he hates this but moment in his life that he lost to Chillin. The worst part was that I lost to Chillin, dude. <laughs> it turned me from like just this guy that plays melee for fun. He's like, man, if only I didn't lose to Chillin. Pro player, in my opinion. Probably still thinks about that. At that point, and winners. No, I'm kidding. He probably doesn't. <laughs> Wild thought Isaiah was the beast. We all thought Ken was just, you know, the overhyped, not not very good, like decent, but you know, overhyped. And Isaiah was like really, really good, just based on watching his matches and playing him and stuff. The sand Ham was a native, like... couldn't help but attract attention. He used the wildest, most unwieldy character in the game, but unlike everyone else who tried, Isaiah made him look good. Oh, in case any of you guys want to know, I lost to Chillin' Dude at Game Over. He, I played Ice Climbers, he beat me with Fox. In winner's finals, Azen was waiting for him. Azen vs. Isaiah was like one of the first insanely high level melee matches where you can watch it and just see the level of like mind games going on. At that point, as in had beat Isaiah, I'd beat Ken, you know, we, we thought, you know, we had pretty much taken it, but the thing that really killed us was that we were focused on Isaiah, like, Isaiah's a problem here, let's talk about how to beat Isaiah, but Ken ended up coming back through losers and, you know, just going on a rampage. I was determined. I had, I had, the, I had the eye of the tiger. You know, he beat Dave, he beats Isaiah, and... Now, the the reason it's so bad, Isaiah, Chief Rico, is because Chillin like, Dude brags. He brags a lot. Because, and he doesn't stop. Isaiah's a lot better. I felt more comfortable, and then I fought Chillin Dude again. I wasn't nearly as focused, which had slightly to do with the time and how late it was, and I had been running the tournament all day. The big shell. I love when Ken says that. <laughs> you know, anything. He basically yeah, just said that he just destroyed you know, Chillin Dude in the rematch. Two sets, you know. <laughs> Because <laughs> Chilly also gets salty whenever he loses again. Okay, so the tournament actually couldn't finish at the venue that you guys just saw. It actually had to finish at Azen's house. So they had about the last like 12 people there from the tournament. They all just played the rest of the matches at Azen's house. And Azen actually got to fight Ken in uh, in like in his kind of like his bedroom. So that's where they had grand finals. So it was pretty it was pretty cool. Uh, I got to watch a little bit of it, and um, and I was there for a little bit of it too. I was kind of just like hanging out at the time. Ken just never let up, and I mean, Asen's not the type to do that either, but Asen didn't have as much of a game plan going in. Like if he had played Ken in more friendlies or just expected Ken to come out, he might have had a better game plan ready and things might have gone different, but Ken did Oh, Kubi, I'm going to put your name back up during the uh, Smash 4 stream. Oh, man. Asen was sad. Like, I, I saw his face. He was sad. Like, I would be sad too, but, I mean, he was representing the East Coast at the time. I mean, I, I pulled in Boston again and I managed to come on top. You could tell yes, I'm time. playing melee after Captain Smacker did. Play or something like that, but he did a very good job of hiding it. Poor Asen, he never talked about his feelings to anyone. 
no word could better describe Asin than unassuming. He is loath to accept his greatness. For all the games that he's good at, yeah, no problem, he just melee. He deserves it. He holds these world records in a game that he just picked up just because whatever, because he's Asin. Not only is he just mellow and kind of goes with the flow, you know, because he doesn't really want to put up a fight, I think he really wants to do everything you say. You know, it's like, hey, Asin, do you want to play Smash for 12 hours in a row and not eat? I do. But it's not just about the game. Hey, Asin, let's take a road trip to Michigan. This is, as my camera is a C920. We're going to sing Little Mermaid. And we did sing Little Mermaid. And so, Weiss' little comment about singing Little Mermaid, it was true. I was a part of that. And it was it was a really, really sick Little, um, little Mermaid version. It was a smash version of Little Mermaid. And it was created by husband, uh, wife's partner. And so, during the whole song... They um, basically husband did a whole remake of the Little Mermaid song, but with Smash terms, um, like I think uh, the up tilt uh, slang term in um, in Smash. I think it's called the um, balls kick, and so he would use that kind of word. I for I forgot what the lyrics were. Unfortunately, it was like you know that that Little Mer Mermaid song where it's like, look at this stuff, isn't it neat? Wouldn't you say my Smash Bros collection's complete? You know, that kind of stuff. So he just went on throughout the whole... He created a whole entire song just like that. And so it was pretty amazing. As me, It was me as in wife and husband and Oro. He's another member of Team Ben. It was pretty cool. I do. But it's not just about the game. Hey, Asin, let's take a road trip to Michigan. Asin, let's put on show tunes. We're going to sing Little Mermaid. And we did sing Little Mermaid. And all those 12, 14-hour trips to the Midwest. He's a great company and a great guy. Dang, man, we're gonna lose the jobs. Well, we scared of the jobs. Okay. The players in different countries and so this is the era when I finally started to actually pick up ice climbers and learn my secrets. So I actually studied a bunch of Japanese videos that were released into the uh, U.S. And I studied this one ice climbers player, and he did this really sick combo. And it's a it's the down throw to blizzard to up smash combo with ice climbers. And so I thought that combo was so cool. And so I tried that combo myself. I was able to do it just like that. It was really easy. And then I tried it in tournament, and I did really, really well. And I, from there, I just kept moving on, moving on up with Ice Commerce, and I just continued to learn until we get to the tournament that we're about to talk about now, TG6. Emerging scenes like America and Japan didn't actually reverse much at all or integrate in any way, so we didn't have a clear indication of which country was better. Thank you, Captain Smacker. From watching the videos, the Japanese are far more impressive in their technical aspects and their creativity. There was, uh, I guess, a realization that Japan players were probably at the forefront of the metagame at the time. Shout out to Captain Jack, Jack, by the way. That's him right there. He's really, he was really freaking good at the time. He had so many crazy combos with Donkey Kong, all the low tiers. He beat Ken's Bowser with Marth. The question remained, Japan or America? For some, the issue was already settled. But with TG6 around the corner, Matt Deasy saw an opportunity. He invited a few of the top oh, Japanese wobbling, players to um, in the States. Who invented wobbling wobbles did. Captain Jack. Asin went to that. Chu went to that. That was a great tournament. To be honest, when, when we were having those back and forths, who's the second best in H2IL, it was most often Chu, more so than the, any of the rest of us. In addition to being the first international tournament, TG6 would finally put an end to an annoying West Coast practice. I remember a match that I saw at TG5 where it was Eddie the Gandor Flare. Matt Deasy, he lost several matches because of items. One of them was to me. It was a Sizor. I remember this too. I hit one Pokeball and it was like a Firebird and he was caught in it. And then I hit him with another Pokeball and knocked him back into Firebird. And then the Caesar came out and took him off and he was just like... And after that, Matt Deasy said, F this, no more items. So he took out items for TG6. 
I was playing friendlies against Sam Jack the, the day before the tournament just to see, you know, the, the difference of the skill level between Japanese and the Marion. Captain Jack's Bowser beat Ken's Mark. I was like, what? Who is this guy? This, this guy's Japanese. He, he, he's like really, really good. This is what I heard. I didn't actually see it. I was, I just didn't understand why I couldn't kill him. Like every single time I'd smash him at like 100%. And this is when we first and figured out about DI. Time I actually learned about DI. Yep. DI, I remember that. Or directional influence is the ability of the player to influence their trajectory if hit by an opponent. It was like so strange the way that Ken explained it to me. He said that you have to like rotate the controller all the way into like from the left or right to the top or something like that. And uh, in like kind of like a uh, Hadouken motion, quarter circle forward, that kind of thing. It was just like the strangest, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, strangest yeah. thing in, in the world back then. You know, I, uh, we applied it though. For, like third round, I was letting him hit me. I shot di, and then I ended up ultimately losing the match. Yeah, people were surprised by that, and I still remember Azen saying like, uh, "Sastofer," when he lost to him. He goes, "I raped him with my Pichu." And most people, I assume, are thinking, "Okay, game over. Repeat. He's just gonna sweep through losers." And then DSF actually took him out and losers. It was a bad ride home too. Like. I, that's the first time I didn't win singles, I know. Even though we ideally would like to see Azim fight Ken again, because that's just always an epic match, this this really opens the door for Azim to take it. I fought Isaiah with my Ice Commerce, and, uh, and I beat him. I beat him really, really, like, uh, I don't want to say badly, but like I choose talk though. Chu beat Isaiah not only in winners but again in losers. 2-0 both times, just showing like dominance over Isaiah, which no one had ever done. Everybody was like, "Oh man, who is this? Look at this ice car player." Other than Azen and Ken, there wasn't anyone who could really touch Isaiah, or so we thought. And then all of a sudden, Chu comes in with this. Considered low tier at the time character Ice Climbers, like he single-handedly probably moved up Ice Climbers 10 spots just based on that performance. I fight Captain Jack. I lose to Captain Jack. It's set up Azim versus Captain Jack, and I'm on the phone with Chu while the finals is happening. I remember getting so pissed off that literally everyone in the venue, it seemed like, was cheering for Captain Jack. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. I do remember being on the phone with Chillin'. Chillin'd calls me while I'm in, while I'm watching finals with Captain Jack and uh, and Azen, and um, and Chillin'd actually says that comment. He's like, "Come on, guys, this is a uh, root for your country. Why are you rooting for the Japanese?" <laughs> he literally said that to me on the phone back in 2004, and uh, I just I just cracked up. But yeah, I just kind of gave him updates about like everything that was going on. I wrecked that. I wrecked this tournament, by the way. It was an amazing tournament. And yeah, I'm kind of really, really happy about it. <laughs> this is the first time you've ever seen a professional dog player. This is so crazy. This, this is so crazy to us. It's like seeing a low tier. It's like seeing Amsa back, to, back in the day. But for us. Can you support your country? Once Azen won, like this I tournament just, was I mean, nerve-wracking. Azen almost lost. Big, like, congrats to Azen, best player in the world, or something like that. Like, I was just like, okay, this is it. Azen's the best in the world. I just proved it. We were talking about, you know, how good Azen is, best, best in the world now. Not because you know he beat everybody, but because he also beat a Japanese player. But I mean, he still won. You know, he still won. So, congrats to Azen for that tournament. That's a good question. Ken was an amazing player back in the day. He yeah, won he most of the excited. tournament, so you know, he was definitely really happy about it. He definitely was, the yeah, best player back then. On the plane. He was showing that off, so he was he was pretty excited about that. The aggressiveness and the speed and the combos and everything that goes with that character, scary. That was as Isaiah, as anything Isaiah's ever done. He's a weird guy. People loved him for that because, you know, it was, it was different, it was unique. 
I don't understand what you go going around, you know, give it hugs and whatnot. He had this kind of aura about him that just seemed unbeatable if he felt like it. More so than that, really, because, I mean, I was really excited about just holding a big tournament. I was like, okay, I want to kill all these motherfuckers in melee. Like, I'm going to win this tournament. So I was getting really hyped at that point. The master of diversity. I mean... This is extra I content. I've never seen this before. that title, but if you're talking just about melee, then we're talking to the real master of diversity right now. That's me. That's, that's me. He was first time. No, he's, he's cool. Okay, well, that's that about covers it up for the second episode of the documentary, guys. I just wanted to thank each and every one of you guys for joining me tonight. It was an amazing time. Uh, it looks like we have about 130 um, of you guys. I, I want to do another one too, guys, but uh, yeah, these episodes are pretty hype. kind of want to save the moments. And it's going to be a nice, I think there's like eight episodes. It's going to be a nice eight weeks for you guys. So definitely look, you know, look forward to these eight next eight weeks with uh, amazing documentary, um, you know, comments from me and like you get to watch the documentary. It's gonna be amazing, and with and with my new mic too. Okay, so I want to say thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna take a quick break and then when I come back, we'll get into some melee matches with you guys.